this episode, it's time for more work on the Ashtray Gauge Pod for Project Low Fairmont, including wiring, switches, and veneer. Welcome to the show. My name is Grant Tommy. This is my channel, Straight Six Fan, where I like to focus on budget minded, relatable, creative builds. A little something I like to call offbeat hot rodding. And today, as mentioned in the intro screen, we are back on the Ashtray Gauge Pod for Project Low Fairmont. And we are going to hopefully get this thing kind of wired up, mocked up in place to where I can take it, kind of disassemble it, um, glue on the veneer. For this and get pretty dang close to finishing this up now i don't think i will get the gauges hooked up by any stretch of imagination but we got some tidbits to cover so let's get into it so yesterday i went out at the parts store bought a rocker switch so what i'm doing here is i've got my caliper set up right on it for exact dimensions for what this thing's going to be when these little friction clips are fully compressed so that will let me know exactly how big of a hole I need to cut into the side of this thing. What you see here is I've marked basically what represents like a center line for the uh, for the switch um, once it's installed in the, I had this laid in the ashtray yesterday. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna transcribe over the measurements um, onto this so I can get to cutting that. And then we can start talking about wire management. So I don't necessarily have the cleanest hole cut, but that's okay because this uh, rocker switch has a little bit of a tapered um, shape to it. Now um, I am using the cigarette lighter uh, power, so I want my power supply, which is uh, marked here on the switch, uh, as close to the, to the back as I can, just to have proper um, proper length. But we have a nice snug fit. So that's gonna be great. Um, so there we are. This is how I'll turn the lights on and off. Um, so now I'm gonna start looking at uh, wiring everything up to make sure that this is one nice complete package. So I'm more or less happy with how it's, it's all wired up um, right now. I haven't cut any of the ground wires for the gauges themselves um, because I think I will eventually well, I think I will tie two, the two of the gauges together, but I think I'm going to leave independent the ground wire from the switch and the ground wire, the one ground wire from the two gauges. But I, I've identified a potential um, ground location, but I'm keeping it tied to the spool at the moment um, just to be sure before I cut it. Uh, that way I don't have to splice the wire in an additional spot. So here's the look at the rocker switch. Um, unfortunately, it is on the passenger side, but um, again, here's the wire from the cigarette lighter, um, which I have a feeling this could be a little bit of a bear getting this uh, hooked up to the switch 
and being able to slide the whole unit in. Um, but I'm not going to uh, test drive that because <laughs> I feel like it might even be harder to pull it out um, and disconnect it. So um, for now, we will just leave it hanging out here. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's what we're dealing with. I'm going to take a look on the driver's side and find a good spot uh, to make a ground wire connection. And then I'll know how far I need to cut that wire. So now that I've figured out where I want to ground this to, uh, I know exactly I got that ground wire cut to length. Uh, that will give me some indication of how much longer to make the other two wires, uh, as you remember from the gauges. But also, the game plan is I'm going to wind up using a self-tapping screw for the ground. Uh, but right now, my energy is focused on disassembling the whole setup now so I can get to uh, putting that walnut veneer on the gauge cluster itself, which will set us up for finishing on down the road. So now that I've got this thing dis back disassembled, uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm cutting in a relief cut on the outside of the face. And what I'm doing there is I plan on doing some aluminum trim accent pieces to match the, what's going on with the dash. So I'm just slicing out 364 width um, on either side. In fact, I already have this side done. Because um, I'm gonna use some aluminum I have laying around, I'm just going to cut in and kind of polish up. So this, the 364 matches the thickness of the material. Just an ever so subtle uh, little accent, but again, it's to try to make this thing look as factory as possible, make it look like it's supposed to be there. Uh, it's part of, of course, the sleeper idea, um, which I'm going to run out of money probably before to make it legitimately fast, but hey, still, um, I want this thing to, you know, it's all in the details sometimes, so anyway, uh, after I get these relief cuts in uh, from there, I'm going to sand the face of this MDF because, as of course, as I've handled it many times, uh, I've got grease from my hands and whatnot. It's very dirty, uh, so for the glue to have a good adhesion, I want a nice, clean surface. So again, I'll get this wrapped up, and then it'll be on the sanding, and then it'll be time for gluing. So one other thing worth mentioning about the uh, aluminum trim pieces that I, I just got done explaining is, I mean, I'm gonna veneer all three sides of this. So that veneer was gonna have to come together somehow, some way at the corners. So with the aluminum trim pieces, it'll help cover up that transition because that was gonna be one that's gonna, well, A, it was going to be susceptible to peeling, um, just being an edge condition. But also, it just, I don't know if it was ever going to look right if I didn't do something. Um, you know, it's a, the, if you've never worked with veneer before, um, you know, it's about, oh, uh, it's probably, it's probably close to, it's probably over the 16, probably 364 of an inch thick as well. Um, so, anyway, it was just like, it's not like I can really skillfully miter the corners of something that, that thin. So, anyway, I just think it's going to tie it all together much better with the aluminum and, um, it's be a better solution all around. So, again, I'm just trying to get off all of the, um, impurities of the material from handling it so much. Like anything, paint job, whatever, of course, if you don't do a decent prep work, you're not going to get the teaching you want, uh, in this case, for the contact unit. Okay, so I made the decision to only sand the front face, and the reason for that is that this will be the first face that I veneer. So I'm going to veneer, veneer it and kind of tape it up, let it cure, um, but I'm just afraid, you know, if I get contact cement on my hands, you know, I'm going to want to pick it up, like, by the sides or whatever. And so I feel like I'll probably just end up getting the sides dirty again. So um, I will sand those, you know, whenever I get to uh, right before I veneer those. So I think I've, this is kind of where it's, I'm going to stop for the day. It is a little past 4, 4.38, whatever. It is Super Bowl Sunday. Um, so I do plan on editing probably more than watching the Super Bowl. That's how it went last year, really. But um, to give you some insight, yesterday I did sample panels 
for the veneer stain samples. And if you follow me on Instagram, uh, you know that I chose the Bombay Mahogany, I think is the direction I'm going. Neither of the two are perfect to match the dash uh, veneer, but or panels or plastic, whatever you want to say. Um, but the Bombay Mahogany does look like the best one. So guys, I'm going to lay down some contact cement on both the veneer uh, and the faceplate so we can get that going. Uh, hopefully tomorrow I can work on it some more. Um, but that's gonna wrap up this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for staying all the way to the end. Again, if you want a straight six fan pistons tee, link to my Spreadshirt store in the description below. That'll do it mostly for this episode. But I did wanna remind you over here, there's uh, other videos you can watch. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, or share. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, but until next time, peace out.